to our person and um, you able to see here the first information facts or details that can be processed or used in various ways. For example, your name, phone number, your email address, or even a photo that you share online. That photo that you have on your WhatsApp as the profile picture there, it's a, it's a form of data there. Then we have uh, personal data. So personal data specifically relates to an individual. It's uh, we term it as PII, personally identifiable information. This is information that you can be able to attribute to a person. So if you say this is Pastor Kacheti, this is Pastor Kacheti's photo here. So examples here are your full name, your home address, date of birth, even your IP address. For any device that you have that is accessing the internet, it has something called an IP address. So that is something that can be identified or traced back to you. The next term that you're going to look at is sensitive personal data. There is a difference between personal data and then there is more sensitive personal data here. So personal data here uh, is more private and requires extra protection. For example, things like medical records. For any conference or uh, institution here that has a medical facility, like for us at CPC, we have the Nairobi Adventist Hospital. Any patient record that we receive there is going to be termed as sensitive personal data there, and it requires some more extra information there in terms of security. Things like uh, our religious beliefs, ethnicity, sexual orientation, whether somebody is going to say they are straight, maybe they are the other kind of sexual variation, you know that. Biometric data, biometric data are things like fingerprints, we have the iris, even the voice, you know. Because we have some places where people are able to be given access using their voice. You just go or even talk to your device and it opens. You've seen those things on your tablets and uh, phones. So that is the sensitive data, uh, uh, personal data. The next thing that you're going to look at is data controller. So uh, a data controller determines why and how personal data is going to be processed. And they have the overall responsibility of the data. A good example is Let's say a conference, you've organized uh, a company or a women ministry meeting or this meeting that we have here. So the person that is collecting this data during the registration is the data controller. So in this case, who will be the data controller for this meeting? EKUC, you know, because this is the EKUC game, game meeting here. The next person that you're going to look at here is called a data processor. So the data processor is the person who is going to handle the personal data on behalf of someone else, usually the data controller. For example, uh, we've, we, we, we've had of the CFMS app that the church uses to manage uh, tithe and offering, correct? So that company that developed that app that does the hosting and everything there on behalf of the church is called Lekats. So in this case, now Lekats is, is known as the data processor here. So the data controller is the person who owns the data, and then you can be able to get the service of another provider. So these are termed as third-party providers. And they're going to store the data, do manipulation, or any other processing that is required for that data to be of meaning to you. That is the data processor here. The last one that you're going to look at here is consent. So anytime we talk about data privacy and protection, the issue of consent has to be very clear. Consent is the explicit instructions for somebody giving the free will for you to have their data and process it for a determined purpose. So, so consent means giving clear permission for your data to be used. It should be informed, specific, and freely given. Somebody should not be coerced. We'll see a few examples just before we finish of how data consent is given and uh, uh, stored by the various entities we have here. So like, for example, when you sign up for a newsletter in those websites that you visit there, they ask you whether you would like to be receiving some, maybe email or communication. You are consenting to them having your data there, and they can able to, to use it here. Please note that minors, these are people who are not of legal age. This varies from one country to the other. Nobody who is not of some mind here, right? So we look at the overview of the data protection. This is all legal. You remember yesterday Moses was handling media law and ethics. We'll continue on this and just touch on section three. We'll upload this uh, data protection act in the presentations there. It's a whole 48 or 50 pages. You can go through it and see, but you'll only highlight three, uh, just section three, just a small bit of it. 
so that you can be able to understand how it will impact uh, our work in the church. So the Act sets out to regulate the processing of personal data, ensuring its protection while respecting individuals' privacy rights. The objectives and purpose of the now we call it the DPA Data Protection Act is number one to regulate the processing of personal data, ensure that the processing of personal data is guided by data principles, likely protect the privacy of individuals, also establish legal and institutional mechanisms to protect personal data. Uh, and provide the data subjects with the right and remedies in case something happened with their data. That's where the Data Protection Act comes in. There will be a legal mechanism for maybe uh, uh, any, any action that will be taken against any data processor or controller who might go beyond what was agreed during the data, uh, data collection process here. So what are the impacts of EPA on charge activities? The church has so many activities where we collect data in one way or the other. We'll just highlight three, and then we'll be able to see how we'll be able to extrapolate to other activities. Activities that require you to collect information from the members there. So this section delves into the specific church activities such as type collections, event registrations, and membership record management here. So each activity is going to be examined through the lens of the DPA. The DPA has almost like 12 outlines of how we're supposed to carry things. So in the three examples, we'll be looking at maybe three or four of each of those DPA outline or uh, guidelines or recommendations of how we're supposed to process and uh, store, store the data here. So we will examine through the lens of the DPA, considering aspects such as handling personally identifiable information, that's the PII, and then concept mechanisms, Lawful processing, data safeguarding, and retention policies. Retention policies are uh, mostly they describe how you're going to store the data for what period. As a rule, you should always retain the data as long as it's necessary. Necessary can be transferred differently. We'll see with a few examples we'll have here. So, when it comes to uh, uh, time and offering, the impact of the DPA Act 2019 on our church here will be number one data collection and purpose. So the church must collect only the necessary data. Uh, we we'll call the time, time and offering now donations. So any kind of donation that is monetary in kind or otherwise should only have data that is needed for that information. For example, personal information such as names, contact details, and donation history should be relevant and minimal here. So we want to write, uh, let's say I receive for you, you've given type and offering. Maybe we're using the manual way or using the CFMS. So the data that we require from you when you're doing the registration should be as minimal as possible and only relevant to that purpose of type and offering. It would be absurd for us to ask maybe for your sexual orientation for the purposes of what? Type and offering, video. Or to ask for your medical history. Can you imagine? The CFMS, ask, uh, the CFMS app, you wake up tomorrow and it's asking you for your medical history, you have diabetes. Is that really relevant to the purpose of this processing? So it needs to be minimal and to their purpose. Secondly, um, uh, consent and transparency. Now let's look at this. So the church must inform members about data collection, processing and storage. Transparency will ensure that members understand how their information is provided. You'll see most of the apps at the bottom there, you'll be able to see a link to their privacy and terms or even services. We look at a few examples there as we go on. Then there's data security and retention. The person who owns this data, we call them the data controller, the term that we used here, data controller, has to ensure it's their responsibility. The moment you attempt to collect data, it's your responsibility now according to the law on the DPA Act of 2019 in Kenya. It's your responsibility to make sure that that data is going to be safe. Doesn't necessarily apply to only systems, even if you are going to do the manual registration. That form where people are signing, writing, and, uh, and everything there, it has to be kept safely. There's a place I usually see this very uh, mishandled or not managed well. You've entered buildings in town. And the security guy is asking for your ID. So sometimes you are reluctant to give that information because you're going to write your full name, you write your phone number, your ID number. See there? They even request for you to leave what? The ID. Is that safe? No. Sometimes they don't institute proper 
security measures. You remember the case of Joey. What happened? He had gone to a building end, and they were using somebody's ID. So that ID must have been left somewhere, and somebody did what? Picked it, and it can land into some some more problems there. So the issue of data security, this is going to purely lie on you as the data controller. Number four is the right of the data subjects. So the people who have given you this information, their names, their emails, etc., there, they have rights. And these rights and the church now should be able to make sure that they are upheld. Members have rights to access their data. So anytime we have information that is not the church, a member should be able to have a way of requesting for that information. Nowadays on SDMS, you can be able to print a profile for a member. Do you know SDMS? Most of us use this, or believe all of us, we use the Adventist Church Management System there. You can be able to request your church clerk to print uh, a report for you, and it will give you every information that the church has about you in the system there. So members have the right to access their data, number one. Number two, rectify in case of inaccuracies. Or number three, request erasures. So a member can request for you to no longer hold their, their data there. Right, number five, data protection officer. So the church, uh, by default, has to collect, and these are talking at the level of the conferences or the fields, or even the union here. By default, we'll always be able to hold a lot of data. We'll have information about the members, events they've attended. Maybe, let's say, if, if for the kids, we'll have them moving from uh, adventurers moving through the various classes there. We we'll always have the data there. So it would be prudent for the church to have somebody called a DPO. A DPO is a data protection officer, and he is somebody who is tasked by law to be able to handle or manage how the data is going to be processed, handled, stored, transmitted, deleted by the organization that they, they work for here. So the church will designate a staff member or hire an external DPO to oversee data uh, privacy here. The other issue is on data uh, breach notifications. These systems are usually not 100% sure. So, you know, is there any system that is hack proof? System that cannot be accessed or hacked? So, what we usually do in IT is try to make this process of breaking those systems very hard as possible. But what happens when, let's say, you're holding data, maybe you have the charge register as a, an example, and it gets lost? How do you notify? You know that's a data breach yeah. in the simplest form. Not just hacking where somebody gets into a system and they're able to maybe, let's say, uh, take down your website or your system. Uh, the touch register that you have there, the touch like if it got lost, that is a serious data breach because it contains data for members. Yeah. In most cases, you can be able to see a few things, maybe the phone numbers, others, they have the uh, people in Kilia Pasaka, you've ticked them there. So, yeah. So it contains some information about the, the member here. So we usually advise on the DPA that in case of a data breach, that is an authorized access to donation records, the church must properly and promptly report the relevant authority. So in Kenya, you're supposed to notify the office of the ODPC, Office of the Data Protection Commissioner, within 72 hours. That's the law. So you can take that time between the time you first discover the data breach and then you need to notify them there. From there, they can be able to escalate. Obviously, you need to know to go to the police station for you to get what? An OB number there, so, yeah, so that the report is in the, in the records there. Another place where now we can be able to look at how the DPA can be able to affect, as we look at the guidelines, is on chat code. So, yeah, chat code is one of the most sensitive uh, organs in the, uh, in the church, where a lot of personal information is discussed. So, yeah, Especially in the of disciplinary issues there. So number one, as a member of the church board, you need to be talkative. Should you post on the status all matters that are being discussed in the church board? You update people who are outside there on how you are proceeding with the various investigations or discussions you have there. So the DPA emphasizes the protection of personal data uh, during board meetings, discussions that may involve sensitive information about members where you are having information about their financial contribution, pastoral care, counseling and care, this needs to be highly protected here. Because it will be very bad for, maybe let's say I approach pastor here for a personal problem, I come to the office there, and then the next day I'm hearing people in the market doing what? Talking or discussing about an issue that I had shared in, in confidence. 
So this needs to be upheld here. So board members, they must exercise discretion and limit discussion to relevant matters. Avoid sharing personal details unless, unless it's necessary for decision making and also ensure that the meeting minutes are securely stored and accessible only to an author, to authorized personnel or individuals there. So, I believe this is very clear from experience. Most of us have been able to handle this. Let's look at another point here. Member information handling here. So the church collects and processes personal data in terms of names, contact details, etc. there. So uh, this must, the church must have a valid reason in terms of uh, the law on why we are collecting some of this information. And this now is where we introduce the issue of uh, consent or legitimate interest. For example, when you wanted to register for this event, it was important for us to be able to know, number one, your name. That's lawful because we need to know who is that attending this. Secondly, we need to know the conference or field from which you are attending from. This will help us to know that the, 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 the purpose of this meeting, which was to maybe create awareness in terms of the activities of gay, have been, maybe let's say, uh, uh, had by people from a certain region and you can able to get this from the attendance there. If we saw that 10 people came and maybe a certain field, only one person came, we can able to see that we might need to go to that field or conference the next time there. So there is a legitimate interest or reason here. Number two, transparency. Members should be informed about data collection. Uh, how many of us have been able to uh, access the Q and the questionnaire, the one that we are scanning there? What first did you have to go through? A data protection act. Yes, we are. If you try to say no at the end there, we did proceed with the, giving you the question that we'll be able to ask. So we look at that as an example here. And then security measures here. So you need to implement security measures in terms of access control, password protection. So let's say you're a church clerk and uh, maybe you're, a, uh, you're taking minutes during a church board or any other meeting that you have in the church. Where those things are going to be stored, let's say it's a church uh, computer or laptop, it needs to be password protected. And even we can go further to only limiting a few people having access to watch to that machine. Because if I add minutes to this laptop, and it's shared by everyone in the chat, there's a possibility that other people might do what? Might have access to it. So sometimes we do the password or even physical uh, authorization. Physical means that that computer is going to stay in a certain office that only has a few people accessing the office. All right. Uh, let's look at a few best practices for compliance. How, how best can we be able to do this? Uh, for this one, I'm going to talk a bit from the level of a conference or a field. Because uh, getting the DPOs is not a very affordable thing because uh, it requires some form of uh, qualification and also registration uh, practices. The good thing is uh, DPO at the conference can be able to cover all the entities that are below their, 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 their this is from, all right? So appointing a data protection officer, so this is one of the things a conference or a field can do. So a DPO will be the contact person for all matters of data protection in an organization. So the data commissioner, this is the office of the ODPC, is going to have, it keeps a register of all DPOs. So if I wanted to be registered as a DPO for my conference, I have to go there, give my qualifications, they look at them, then they're going to approve me as a data processing officer there, and then a record is going to be kept there. And the DC, now this is the data commissioner, will expect the DPO to be the liaison officer in terms of filing accountability reports. The reports that you need to be filing from time to time there. For example, each conference or field to have a DPO registered with the office of the data protection uh, commissioner there. Another thing that we could try so that we are more compliant with the Data Protection Act of 2019 in our churches will be to conduct data protection impact assessments. So these are assessments that are usually conducted in terms, there is a layout or a tool that you're able to use. You can able to maybe administer it orally, make some observation in terms of how things are usually done, where we're handling data, or we can even hire third parties to do it on our behalf here. So like for example, if you have a system like SDMS, you could contract a company to come and test the securities, we contract a legal staff to check on how 
the terms and conditions are articulated, and then will be uh, will be sorted out here. So conferences or fields can be able to help churches or institutions. These are schools, hospitals, where we have records being collected in the data that is personally identifiable, uh, being collected and stored there. The third thing that you can do is providing education. So like what you are doing right now. I believe most of you have learned a few terms and learned a few things that they didn't know before and how they can be able to do what to continue improving in terms of data protection uh, in their various entities there. So number one, providing training to they can gain awareness of their responsibility regarding personal data and also know their rights. Also, training emphasizes obtaining informed consent so that you understand why are we asking for this information. I've seen most of us when we are signing up for services online, at Gmail, they give you a very long list. Video. How many of us have I reached those terms and conditions? Una scrolling into chili, you don't have any? Accept video. If you one day when you are bored, you can just read through those terms and conditions. And uh, even seen for Safari when you're signing up for Mbesa, signing up for those babies, they give you they usually in fine prints, you know. Because that's where when you try to sue them, they are going to tell you, but you did what? We signed half a senior. See, even for the bank loans, you go first, we are, I did pay one month, but I paid everything. They tell you, look at the terms and conditions there. So, um, the, other, the other thing that training does is it includes the issue of breach notification, which most organizations tend to hide or shy away, shy away from. Mostly when a company is hacked, or maybe let's say their data has been leaked, they try to hide it. Last year we had an issue with Naivas. No, Naivas was hacked and all their customer data was downloaded. Somebody uploaded it. Uh, the same happened to Kenya Airways. Somebody uploaded the whole information. You could see password, you could see passenger manifests on the flight and everything there. So there are ways to deal with that legally, but anytime there is an issue of data breach here, you are supposed to watch. To, prom to promptly report to the authorities and cooperate so that this, this can be done what can be can be can be installed here. So we look at a few examples here as we finish here in conclusion. So let's align church practices with privacy principles, not only to ensure legal compliance, but also to foster trust and respect uh, for individual privacy rights. This is something that is enshrined in our constitution of 2010. So the issue of data protection is not optional. And there's something or a principle here called principle by design. So anything that you are coming up, be it a system, be it a process in the church, we need to think of privacy from the ground up. Privacy should not be a last after the, or the last option where you realize we created a system and then we're supposed to comply with uh, the data protection act. You need to start from the ground up, you do what? You go building the system of the process, thinking of privacy uh, of the members of, uh, of the data that you're going to correct there from the, from the members here. So let's look at a few examples here. Uh, you can able to see this is the form. For those who've been able to see the Q&A uh, uh, form there, it has an elaborate data uh, protection act there. And also at the end, it gives you a way of contacting the data controller, that's the union. A way that you can be able to contact them if you needed to change a few things that you can be able to see the email. So once you understand that, you'll be able to see these. Another place that we find these is for uh, a system that are used for event management. How many of us have been able to register for the Bible conference? Okay, how many of us have heard of the Bible conference? Okay, how many have seen people registering there? Yeah, so before you are able to complete your registration online, you have to do what? Accept the terms and conditions. But of course, most of us, we don't read. We just check and do what? And complete. So you should read there. You're able to see things like refund policy. If I was to register on this uh, system and I fail to attend the event, what happens to my money? So there's in the future work on that. So, um, another one we have is on SEMS here. I know members ask. And this is a little bit serious because with SEMS now we are dealing with sensitive personal data that is being exported outside Kenya. So you know SEMS servers are not in Kenya because SEMS is a global 
platform provided by us by the general conference to manage both active and inactive members. So this data at some point is going to be stored outside Kenya here. So if you want to know how your data is handled, there is a whole uh, page here dedicated there. We put the links at the end of this presentation. There are some references here. Uh, and that brings us to the end of this uh, uh, presentation. These are the differences. You'll be able to see them once you get the PPTs. Uh, hope we'll be able to implement uh, most of the things that we've learned here, be able to comply with this, as these are fundamental rights that affect our members when we are collecting their information. Be blessed. Thank you very much, Tyson. Uh, for now, we'll be a bit fast. We're going to hear about uh, Shaky Media Report. Uh, Kaka Yetu, Wana Jason Wamkota, Ataeza ku present about Shaky. Muna um, Kohona Hapa, we have a uh, Arola Bar talking about Shaky. Uh, Jason Wamkota has over 20 years experience in the media industry and he has worked for the Adventist Church for more than 12 years. Welcome to Pigia Makofi and Apo Kuja. He has been very long. Unajokuna watu wapayo wanashingo kupanya kazi kwa kanisa. Wanasema wanataka kwanda kule nje kupata mari akini mungu wameza kumusaidia. Andiye anayesima miya sheki atawajuza mengi. Good morning, dear Sabbatarians. Good morning. Is this audible enough, my brother? Because you have uh, said that I'm a veteran, but I, I should be audible enough. Thank you very much. Uh, Sheikh Yifem, we start by introducing, this is our um, Rola Bana, that is Adventist One Radio. Shake your fan. Uh, the mission statement is there, the vision and the approach. Because of five minutes, wisdom demands that I don't go into the detail. Because after all, you are reading and you are able to know. We bought this radio from the wife of the late veteran broadcaster, Tony Usalami. By that time, it was a secular radio station, uh, popularly known for Lingala. Tara and some bit of reggae music. But because after the demise of Musalami, the wife could not manage that radio, and that is how there was a need for this radio to, to be sold. The Seventh day Adventist Kenya Cosfield um, decided to buy this radio purposely to reach our brothers. Because I understand we are going live. Again, the very wisdom demands that I don't mention in such a way that I over sensationalize because the Kenya Post, we in Mombasa, we broadcast in Swahili, English, and some bit of Mijikenda. Now, we are targeting majority of the Christians. We are the others who don't believe in any religion, and we have our lovely brothers, the Muslims. They are our lovely brothers because we are living peacefully with them. It was very impossible to reach the Muslim by then uh, by means of just a mere preacher telling um, our brother, maybe, uh, maybe Hassan, praise the word of the living God. It was impossible. But it is possible right now as we are speaking, even as we are, we are having this convention, it is very easy to have a phone in session and to hear Fatima Ali say, Buana Asifiwe, the program is touching to me. And that is why the radio has been so instrumental to reach those we cannot reach by means of all one. Another thing about this radio, we are able also to go those unentered areas.
there's some areas because of the insecurity problem. You can't. By all means, you can't. But through the means of the radio, we are able to evangelize some parts of Bamba where we have three server school. The Digo part, for those who know the, uh, the history of the Digo, they are predominantly um, Muslims. And for, for, the, for this reason, because of this uh, Adventist world radio shaking, we play good music. We have news. We have sports. They are able to follow our programs and also appreciate the message of the three men, three angels. Thank you very much. Wisdom demands that it's good to obey. My time is over. If you want to listen to this radio here in Mombasa, 106.6 Shake FM. And also on Facebook, you can get Shake FM. That is uh, Tuavuma Mombasa. Tuavuma Mo Shake FM, Tuavuma Mombasa. You can get us on online channel. For those remarks, dear Sabbatarian, may God bless you so much. Thank you very much, my friend. Yes, sir. Amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, we are supposed to have another presentation, a yeah, media report from our brothers from Mekwatio at Mekwana Church Kidogo because we're going to have an online session. Na yule mutambaya na fakufanya online session, ameza kubama sana. But we're going to give a chance to that person. And then uh, Mekwatio, you're going to present in the afternoon. Ole sana, lakini mtaeza kukulisenti. Ito basi, I'm going to welcome our brother Hagai Abuto. He is also a veteran. Hagai Abuto ni veteran kwa sababu alianza kufanya kanisa kazi mwaka wa elfu mbili na sita. Bada ya kuweza kufanya the corporate world wa miaka mingabi, metano. If your Hagai is going to join us through the online I can see him pale, Agai Karibu Sana is going to take us through, um, is it trending? Yes. So Karibu Sana, Agai. Uh, to make sure that the audio is fine. It's okay, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, first apologies that we are not able to be with you in person. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, programs to run here at the division, uh, so April is quite busy, but we hope that God will give us another opportunity maybe next year to come and be with you in person. Uh, we have been so blessed by the presentation that I was able to tune in and listen to, and I want to thank God for giving us technology to enable us to be able to meet virtually, even if you are not able to meet in person. Um, the, the topic that has just ended before the report, uh, uh, the, the, the topic that was given by Kaison is a very important topic that uh, I hope all of us are going to take seriously. We are seeing cases where companies are being charged, fined a lot of money because of data protection issues. So this is not the time that we can go out as communication directors, take pictures of a finder somewhere or in a school and just publish on Facebook or on our chat website without consent from the parents. Especially anything touching on the children, we must get direct consent from the parents. So that is one thing that we need to take seriously. I know we are learning a lot, but as we take notes, we are going to review back at home and make sure we are aligned to what we learned. I'll just take a few minutes to discuss with us um, some emerging technologies that we are considering as a chat. One thing that I'm so happy about is that God has blessed the Adventist Church. We always have prior knowledge of a lot of things before it happens, and we need a pack of churches 
when it comes to our health message, is one thing that the whole world now is trying to cope up with. When it comes to our education system, we are pioneers in many areas. So when it comes to digital uh, use for mission, the Arabic discharge has done a lot, has done a lot. And uh, recently we had a Pope for Africa event, and you could see the impact it made, transmitted from New Life Church, but the impact was resounding globally. And let me just share my screen to share some notes. Um, that's going to be the basis of our presentation today. Yeah, so one thing I'd like to say here is that the moment you are a communication director, the moment you are a communication director, you are a student. Communication directorship is not like any other department that run routine things. Communication department is one, there's a lot of dynamics, a lot of new things to learn. And one thing that you must do as a communication director is that you must leave that department the moment you exit, having changed the way you found it. Having changed the way you found it, because every day there's something new that you're learning in the technology world. Um, something else I want to mention as we go through this presentation is that God wants us to use what's around us for mission. And this word I want to highlight here, with thoroughness and exactness. God wants us to use things and use it excellently. It's not a matter of, it's not a matter of just, uh, you know, doing things for the sake of it. A bulletin, the format we had 10 years ago is what we still have now, appealing to the older generation, but not quite appealing to the the young Turks, the, Z, uh, the, the Gen Z, as we call them. So we need to make sure that we do our things as communication directors above board, a little bit excellent than the ordinary. Let me just give you an example of uh, this, if you can see my screen. This is uh, a signpost of a church. I like the way it's there. I want to make emphasis on this. The first one is a cycle of the church. Most of our churches, when you go and you see the way they look, it doesn't look like it represents the God we serve. Uh, I think when we want to make signage for our churches, as communication director, this falls under our department, we need to make some that is beautiful. God created this one beautifully. And us as his children, we must do things in an excellent manner. We need to follow the principle of signage and communication as provided for, but the output of our work must be excellent. The other thing I want to, us to consider and consider seriously is the use of QR code. I think going forward, every signage that we are going to put up should have a QR code besides the, the words so that it can direct the audience, anybody who sees it, to our resources in our website that they can learn a lot of things about what our church teaches. You know, if you just put the arrow showing the direction, that's it, that's very traditional. But if you put something like, uh, do you want to be baptized? Or something like that besides your QR code, somebody will look at it and then scan it as they drive past your church, as they walk past your church, and they should be able to get your bulletin, your announcement, anything that should be consumed by the public can be accessed through this QR code. Now, I'd like to say something about the social media. Social media, I'm sure most presenters that came before me must have talked about this. But I want us to look at the relevance of media, of social media. We know that uh, right now, we talk about Facebook and all that, but Facebook is more of all the generation, my generation and above. When you want to get the younger people, when you want to get the, 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 the business class people, when you want to get guys who are concerned with the global news trends, politics, then they are mostly on Twitter. Now, youth are mostly on Instagram, and also on TikTok. You know that uh, most of our youth, if you look at the TikToks, you know, people share a lot of, uh, you know, their status. 
I know somebody has shown me how they do, a girl, how beautiful they do, maybe some music playing in the background. But you see, TikTok can be used to share short breaks. TikTok can be used to share, you know, small viral phrases. Now, the, the, the older generation would not mind picking a book and reading and reading and reading, or sitting and watching a YouTube uh, live stream of a sermon, or a whole church event from morning to evening, and they sit there you know, diligently and follow. But the young people, they don't want to do that. The young people, what will be appealing to them are short messages that appeal to their ears and get their attention. So if we say that now, the communication directors in East Kenya, every Sunday morning, let's saturate our networks with a prayer to bless the people as we begin the week. Then you share this with your church platform, with the district platform, station, conference, whatever. And then this goes out to all the friends we have in our, all, all our network. Let me tell you, it will be a routine that our friends who are not Adventists will start looking forward to. This is something that is, we need to really look at, and it can really help us in our mission. Then we can do topical issues. And the other thing I'd like us to think about is what we call virtual reality or augmented reality. You know, anything virtual that gets to people, but when you talk to someone, they can sleep on you. But when they see it's accompanied by something that is real, then uh, it, it, uh, it speaks to their communication senses more. Now, I, I'll show you a link here, uh, just a virtual tour, that can be used to enhance how we market our message out there. Evangelism is like marketing, how you package it, how you speak to your audience, and everything counts. And talking about this, maybe something else about the social media. We need to showcase something that uh, uh, bring direct lessons to the young people. For example, uh, we can get like short testimonies from guys who, let's, let's say, were drug addicts. You know, they just give a short one-minute video on that you can overcome. Like I was a drug addict to overcome. And just as Jesus said me, he can also save you. And then we spread this out. I always see on hope channels some interviews by Sister Catherine, where maybe somebody who had issues, you know, has been converted and all that. We can break this down into small chunks that we send out. Somebody would watch something for two minutes, then for 30 minutes. And so your 30 minutes presentation can be broken down into short, short uh, portions. So talk about virtual reality, I'll come to, to this shortly, I want to share something. But the, the, the fourth thing I want to talk about is the radio. The radio, you know, statistics show that though people thought that when internet came and television and all these things came, the radio would not find space. But what's interesting is that the radio, people are getting back to it, you know? Somehow people, just more what is on the radio than what is trending on social media. Uh, so we're not about going to the government to apply for this frequency that take a lot of time to get, but how about these web-based radio stations that do not require a lot of bandwidth to transmit, you know, because right now everybody is on the web. I would say 80 or 70 percent of the population in Kenya, we are consumers of the internet services. How about we circulate this? We have radio that speaks to our local context. Instead of waiting for Sabbath YouTube stream or Wednesday maybe prayer or Friday Vespers, can we have a short prayer session that people can call in, you know, just for prayers, maybe lunch time or something like that, which you can do at the comfort as a communication director, you can control this at the comfort of your office space, wherever you want. So we need to explore how we can use radio. You know, I was talking to a certain gentleman who went to study in Australia, and he came back, and he was saying, hey, I've been here for the last two years, and I was able to set up, you know, 
I make a session and I feel the things that means, you know, I was like, wow, this is interesting because it is appealing to the elite audience using this radio channel. You don't want a radio channel that is like uh, what you're used to, you know, talking in Davos and people drinking somewhere, laughing, no. But you get, let's say, a professional talking to their fellow professionals through a web radio. So when I'm driving, I just know I need to go to this website, click play, and then I get everything. So this is something that is important. And the one now is talking about the next thing is about artificial intelligence. By the way, artificial intelligence, though it's talked about a lot now, it's been with us for like forever. Remember those days we used to do mathematical calculations, those went to school earlier, we had like the log books to get the, you know, the log and all those things, logarithm and all those things, but then the calculators came. So instead of spending a whole piece of paper calculating a 4x4 four four multiplication, you know, some, you use a calculator then in a second, you get the answer, that's the artificial intelligence. And so nowadays you look at, uh, you know, you, you are in your, in, in your sitting room, living room, and you are maybe checking some websites, you want to buy a car, then when you go to Google platform, you know, all these things, social media, they, they, you get a suggestion that uh, this is a car, sell like, yes, a car, you go like, are you tell the internet, but they, they tend to know what you want. <clears throat> the internet tends to know what you want, then they have built you what are built to you. So the physical intelligence can be used a lot. Of course, we must use it a bit of salt because I was studying like about the, 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 uh, the, the chat, the chat platform that are free, like chat GPT, and uh, I think when you say, when you search something against that looks like it's against NDPTQ, for example, then uh, they don't like such kind of uh, searches or something that speaks about the deep you know, theology. But when it's come to getting general get information, there's a lot that you can get from there. Again, when it's come to, let's say you are doing a presentation on Zoom, now that you know that we have. AI that can be used to translate what you say in English in multiple languages in real time. And that means that uh, when I'm speaking English now, somebody can hear me in Spanish, you know, the AI will get the, my voice, how it comes out, and get my message in Spanish, in French, in whatever. So this, this gospel is now a gospel without boundaries because of what artificial intelligence can, can do. What I said at the beginning is that the moment you are declared a communication director, you are on a learning path. So once say you watch the church, your local congregation, you are your field, your district you can gain from. And one thing I want to mention here is not in my notes is that you can use set of numbers. Anytime you want to do an initiative and maybe it involves some money or funds, if you need us one local congregation can be expensive, but when you study it out and then you hold hands and you work as a network of churches, then some of these things can come down. I will not go into much about this, but uh, the mobile apps are available for us. Uh, the church now is introducing 7Me. Tyson talked about SMS in his presentation, but the 7Me is also an app that the church members will be able to use to get, you know, you can have Sabbath school members put together, you can have all our resources together, and you scroll, the way people like scrolling, all this will be available in this uh, app called Chat uh, 7Me that works with SNS. We are already piloting a few charges here in Nairobi, and I think soon it will be rolled out to the rest of the, the union. We have the online giving platforms and all that, you know, you can now put a QR code and say, you have, you have to give. Now, the QR code can give all the information. You don't have to publish your address or whatever, whatever, everywhere, but you can extend this by just using the QR code and all that. Chatbots, very important. Visitors can leave uh, questions. You can have, uh, you know, someone replying to what has been asked. And also, now we use AI also to pre-configure some questions and answers, and someone can get a whole list of, let's say, about that needs or, or 
prophecy and the lessons using this pre-configured information. Now, there's something here called data analytics. Communication directors, we need to help our church. Oh, sorry, before I get to that, there's something I need to highlight here. here. Train pastors on use of more online platforms. When we had our Hope Channel, Hope for Africa event here, we realized that some pastors uh, are not really exposed to use of uh, these online platforms. So as communication directors, please make sure that your local church pastors know how to use the online media so that in case there are questions there, in case there's need to interact there, then she, they should be able to help you with the spiritual needs as they interact without depending on you all the time. Data analytics. We need to know the demographic spreads of our church members. Where do they stay? Where are the nearest churches? And all those things. We work with our local church clerks to define the location of our church is SNS. Uh, right now, the, the general conference is trying to study how uh, churches are within populations. How concentrated is our churches? If you look at a cool town, for example, is it that we have most Adventists in the West, or in the South, or in the North? Where do you get that information? The data analytics that the communication director can provide will help us with this. So communication is not just a matter of making sure that the PA system and the microphones are working on a Sabbath morning, but the communication department is a very important pillar of the church, especially in this generation. So, but let me just show you how this, this works, this, uh, how the, the virtual reality works. And you can use this. Um, this is this is ECD. If you've never been here, uh, you can quickly take you to a tour to see, see how ECD looks like. So for your church, for some event that you are hosting, for some facilities that you have, you can do a virtual reality show and see and let people, you know, get to know what our church has, what your local church has some of the events that you do, and all that. So right from the gate, you can enter and walk up in this city, and then you can either go to the left or to the right, and then it shows you everything that you may need to know about in our facility. So virtual reality is uh, an imaging trend that is used in many places, and I want to recommend this. So uh, briefly, that's what I wanted to tell you this morning. I hope you were able to pick a few notes here and there. But really, we shall meet and continue learning. What else is done? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Haggai, for that uh, sharing. And uh, we want to appreciate. Let's clap for Haggai. Yeah, thank you very much. We are blessed to have had you present to us. Thank you, and God bless you. See you next time. Yes, now we want to turn it up when they Now, we're going to be Mahubiri ya siku, mchungaji wetu wa meza kutika, lakini ajua kabla ya pale kuna mambo kadha, mataka kupanya. Asante, wakati huu tunataka kama kawaida kuwanze na wimbo na tunataka ku walika ndugu zetu na dada zetu kutoka kule ambao wa kwani Kenya Post Field Kenya Post Field uh, tunaomba mweza kuja hapa mbele ili tuweza kupata wimbo mmoja kisha uh, baada ya pale kukaribisha mchungaji Giga ambaye ataweza kukaribishia mtumishi wa Mungu siku ya leo mchungaji daktari Samuel Kapore Kwa hivyo Kenya Post Field, uh, nipo mwepika hapa, ni 
ilikuwa ni afadhali ili tuweza kuokoa muda na asanteni sana na kumaya kwamba tunazidi kuwa tunabarikiwa tumefuata hiyo discussion ya uh, presentation and you get to have it tumeelewa najua inaweza kuwa ngumu kidogo lakini inatufaa pale makanisani virtual realities nimeshtuka amesema kwamba facebook ni ya wazee sasa tumeingia mambo mengine na sisi bado tunaongana na nini na facebook so imagine trends mambo yanabadilika we must change we have no option yes otherwise we lose relevance Kenya Force Field naona wanazidi kupika miongozo na mchungaji wao mchungaji Kariyoki communication uh, department eh? uh, na asanteni sana karibu kila mmoja anapokea mibaraka na pia 
uh, information ambayo inaleta transformation katika utekelezaji wa majukumu yetu because already we are of age this is the time we are talking of digital age na ni lazima tuweze kuteka advantage ama kuchukua nafasi ambayo Mungu ametupa hizi sio enzi zile Mungu alikuwa anaweka record zake katika scroll we know that God lives at the end, in the beginning and I want to believe that God does not go through a civilization as we are progressing. And I only believe God is very far ahead of us. Lakini ya naone ya kwa tumekoma na tumefika kiwako ya kuachiriwa kile ya pacho tunapaa kutumia kwa wakati huu na vile ambavyo tunakuja kufundishwa mambo kama haya tunafundishwa kwa sababu Mungu ameelewa sasa wakati umewadia tuweze kufumu kumu from the analog ways of communicating kufikia kwa the digital digital already tumeona ndugu yetu hagai hapo katika shughuli zake hapo mahali pengine it did not need him to post uh, it did not uh, cost him time to travel kuja hapa kuacha majukumu yale ambayo saa hii ameingilia kwa wakati huu haijamgaribu pesa mingi but he has communicated to hundreds of people Christo na ina maanisha kwamba if you can embrace this the work will be very easy for us or we can meet more people kuliko jinsi ambavyo traditionally tumetumia this morning uh, no not this morning in the evening yesterday i was talking to a certain lawyer ikiyo tukiogea mambo ya jinsi ambavyo uh, communication hata katika cases zinafanywa uh, unaongea na simu uh, na ukwambia wakati mtu anaongea kwa simu na pia wakati yule ambao amepatikana ese kale kwa yule mtu anakomunicate akalikugusha kitu muhimu ambacho nilikuwa nimefundishwa kitambo wakati nilikuwa uh, market assessment uh, nilikuwa nafundishwa how to position myself when i'm before a client ninakaa vizuri na ninamwangalia vizuri jinsi tunavyo ongea because of the factor of the body language ili nijue kwamba as i'm presenting my product ni siwe ninatumia muda wangu is very important when you are doing that is for five your analog is very okay but at the same time as we are progressing even that body language you are experiencing it yule ambao unaongea naye unamuona hata kama uko kaili nyingi yule ambaye anaongea kwako unamuona so you get those expressions through words and at the same time through body language na kwa hiyo naamini kwamba kuwa hapa ni faida sio kupoteza mali sio kupoteza muda i want to believe wakati na roho ibani itakuwa ni jinsi Musa alipoteremka kutoka kwa Mrema alikuwa anangaa kufuku wa Mungu unaonekana and i want to believe by the time we go back home we will be the same in a more crystal so i just want to put here to do the wakati huu jinsi ambavyo bingu imependezwa ipokee ujumbe kusaidia kwa hivyo pana karibu sana uweze kuongea nasi wangapi wanakaribisha pamoja nami asante sana pastor yangu sweka Asante sana za mpinga. Ala salima mjangwa. Nilipo kuwa nimegeti huko, nilikuwa nimeshangaa hasa nasema napendeza sana. Uh, lakini ni kweli. Amen. Ni kweli. Nisimama hapa uangalie huku. Na hiyo uniform isipokuwa bibi na mazangika. Kila mtu yuko uniform. Angekuja 
yule kiongozi ambaye ameenda wana harusi ni sisi tuliambiwa friend where is your wedding come why are you not in uniform but i know we have no problem uh, we are uh, we are safe uh, we are taken care of after all you invited us um i say let me also be acknowledged and compliant so that bana nilikuja hapa na karatasi jana baada kila mtu anakunikamilika na mimi nikasema nitajidai amen chapo tukanyoratia nitupata na nane nane kwa hivyo um uh, i want us to um have a talk together and with us today uh Mr. Martin Mutea can you understand that Martin Mutea you are not about to move here again ah ni naonekana ni kutoka uh hapa hapa na the CPC and uh, of course uh, Uh, South Nairobi Kajar. This is a very important leader. Is the treasurer of South Nairobi Kajar. South Nairobi Kajar. Our salim. Our salim. Kajina la Yesu. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Asante sana. Nashukuru kwa kupata nafasi hii. Na asoa kuna pia wazetu wa kutoka South Nairobi Kajar. wako hapa wakati wa sauti na Europe kaja asante nashukuru nao kusimama mbele na kuone kweli kutoka kweli unasikia vizuri na hata kwa wale wengine nashukuru kwa sababu ya mkutano and i sija sija swaya kusikia hii mkutano ya ke sijui kama ilikuwa before lakini mwaka hii niamka vizuri na ninasema tuendelee hiyo so that pate mafundisho ndipo kazi ya Mungu yote. Na niseme ya kwamba sikuwa nipite hapa. Lakini jana nilikuwa na masishi ya one of my accountants alipotesa data yake tunaenda masishi. Sasa nitarudi nitarala hapa na Guru au president Pastor Kenneth Wachana nimesukumia. So akasema ya kwamba atande kwa sababu alikuwa na msiba ile nyumbani kule kwa sababu ya program ya kesho alizikuja so akaniambia wewe kwa sababu umefika hapo nakuru pia hapo salimia watu wa Mungu na kuambie eh jambo na ninasema kwa hivyo nawapatia salamu zake umepokea salamu za kiongozi wetu au president mchana asante sana kwa hivyo kaniambia niwaambie tu mtie moyo na kazi hii ya Mungu lazima tuendelee kushirikiana ndipo communication ikiwa inafanya vizuri hata kupasa ujumbe itakuwa rahisi. Kwa hivyo nashukuru sana Mungu aweze kuwabariki na mnaonekana maridadi kabisa. Hata wakati nilikuwa nakuja nimepotea njira hapa nikauzo naenda wapi kwa harusi. Ndio nilikuwa nafikiri hapa iko harusi lakini eh ile kimangana hili unakaa kama watu wa harusi. Mungu awabariki. Asante sana. Hiyo jana tumesimulizia maada kuu ambayo nilikuwa na tumesema communication mission. Hapana tumesema mambo mengi leo tutaongezea kesho tutamalizia. Ah leo ah tumesema ya kwamba tufundishe tufundishe ipi naitwa an interesting kitaba One of the most important thing in communication is what? Is what? Communicators speak with some voice with what? Feedback. Feedback ni kwamba unazungumzia mtu naye anakujibu. Lakini katika ile ambayo tumezungumzia jana inasema today we want to examine from the bible what is called a very interesting feedback 
na hiyo feedback na feedback is about a definite command hiyo ambao tuko katika biblia we have a definite command and the command is a command sisi ambao tumeamini tumemwamini Mungu tumekuwa na kitu inaitwa uh, tunaitwa askar you know i don't know whether you have observed um a police or anybody in the armed forces anybody in the armed forces is trained and the training is repeated over and over again one thing for you is to take a command don't ask questions don't not for anything is a command it's a command and because we are soldiers in the bible you read there is a lot that equates believers to soldier work we are soldiers of the cross even the bible we are soldiers You see you read it like uh, in second Timothy chapter 2 uh, verse 1 to 3 it says and a soldier the soldier you know the soldier you, you are called a soldier you are called a soldier and you you go there even in the in the, in the, in the songs we have come up we are soldiers ata wewe ndio tunaita wewe askari watu wa Mungu Yesu you come to man amen you amen tangu leo wana vita ni wewe mbele kwa so like soldiers of the cross and as we are known we must thus mabutete kio ambayo inaitwa the command when you are given a command you don't ask questions you only go ahead and repeat yesterday we had a definite command and the definite command is actually presented in the context of all thing kiapo hiyo command imetolewa kwa kiapo maana in second timothy chapter 4 it is given in the commandment of all thing is a, a good setting mimi pastor samuel makoli maneno yoko tendeka kwenda kusema katika mbele ya kofi hii itakuwa ya kweli na ukweli mtupu e mungu this thing and hicho uh, kiapo ndicho ambacho kimewekwa katika waraka wa pili kwa Timotheo 4 anasema i charge you i ought you i make you take an oath raise up the bible in the presence of god and jesus christ who shall come to judge the living and the dead and in the view of his second appearing then the command comes the command is preach the word that's the command now if some of the biblia yote that is the command that we have been given hilo ndilo jukumu ambaye mungu ametukabidhi unaamini mungu kwa umebatizwa hujabatizwa umepewa kazi kanisani ukiapewa kazi kanisani basi uwe ni umemwamini ulienda shule au kwenda shule nitakiri masikini 
basi ya haijalishi kitu ambacho inadhalijana mbele yako is to obey the command and the command is there it's clear and it says kwa kiingereza na si kitamina ji preach the word and it tells you in season and out of season during convenient times and during uh, the, the times when it's not convenient but the point is it's not about circumstances it's about it's not about anything that surrounds you the point is preach the word now in this business of preaching the word that's where we are getting uh, a very interesting feedback so the disciples who are given this command went out and obeyed it and one this preaching the word as many many ways of saying it. it is called the truth if you read uh, uh, that if you if you continue reading that verse it's called the truth it's called the gospel it's called the good news whatever it is the command is preach the word in season and out of season rebuke uh, exhort and teaching with teaching with all perseverance and then he gives the reason which we considered yesterday for the time is coming when people will not endure sound word doctrine so since people will not endure sound doctrine you don't stop preaching the word you will preach in any less and he says because people will be tired of sound doctrine will develop itching ears and will just drive away from the truth find ways of preaching the word yes the condition of the world will not be better people will not be uh, will not have interest in the word it will find many things the word would have taught them the word would have given them a different appetite but the point is preach the word it is the one that is going to do things so when they were told they went out with all the enthusiasm with all power and energy and the preach now this is where we get a feedback majibu a testimony a witness and i want you to see how well did the disciples obey the command and preach the word we cannot know we were not there there's no record no god recorded them no god took a video to show the energy and the enthusiasm but somehow god led people and recorded down and down from the first century to the 21st century we can assess whether the evangelists did an excellent job and actually i'm going to give you two scenarios that tells you there is an interesting feedback how do we know that the disciples that the apostles did a good job how do we know one is they went out and you know they were told in your hardship you you will encounter hardship in this brief in the world but i have taken it upon myself that you will preach and you will navigate all the difficulties mtapitia magumu lakini kazi yenu ni kuhubiri neno so wakafanya haya ikaletwa ikawaletea matatizo mengi one of them is they were arrested for preaching the word and when they, they were taken before the court wameenda viapo vya koti wamesimama hapo 
we want to see this interesting feedback. So Acts chapter 5, uh, John, Peter, and James are standing before a court. They have been asked several times, you remember, they went to preach, they were arrested, and they were almost bounced on them. They wanted to slaughter them alive. If that Maria had told them, maybe it's in the, no, they were not witnesses. In the Sunday evening, they were not witnesses. Get it from me. So, gentlemen, that Maria now tells them, gentlemen, let's treat these people gently. And he gave them something that had taken place. He told them, if this movement is from God, whatever you do, you cannot stop it. If it is from God, if it is from man, it will die a natural death. He told them two examples. Judas came, he, he, um, he, he, he posed as somebody powerful, but what happened? He collected people here, it collapsed. And then he gave another example. But if this is what is here, don't musiswiye hi. Basi, akawambia ushauri wangu ni gani? Akawambia wapatie maajizu makana. Warn them strictly, let them go. Then they were one. And then when they went out, they defied. They defied. You see the the, the struggle that is going with the strike. No, no, no. Doctors have a, have a court order. They must be court order. You know, they defied the court order. Then they went and prayed and, and, and they preached. And then they were rearrested. Now that is where I want to get uh, uh, this feedback. They were rearrested. I want somebody to read from there. Acts chapter 5, verse 28, and we see. This is the first feedback to know how they responded to the divine command, preach the word in the season and out of season. Brother, read it. It says, Now they have brought them before them, they are saying, Did we not strictly? Command you not to to teach in this name. And look. Okay. Now the testimony, a very interesting one, is they are saying you are you are where have you filled it? You have filled the whole Jerusalem with your own doctrine, with your teaching. No, just just give that. Now I am talking about that testimony. I'm talking about that feedback. People who are not given the task, the preaching of the word, they were there, they were opposing it, they were using all means to oppose it. But what a pinga, like him, you are a fika maali, a mako, to testify. And they say, yeah, we have prevented it. But we have been unable, and the testimony is you have filled the whole of Jerusalem with your teaching. That's feedback. That's feedback. What are they saying? That the disciples were a failure or a success? A success. We, we have tried to prevent this. We have given you order, strict one, but you have defied them in the state of. This name disappearing it from Jerusalem, it is now a by word everywhere in the streets, in the houses, in the bedroom, in the sitting room, everywhere in the in the loose, in the trees, everywhere on the streets, everywhere children, it is in children's mouth, it is in the mouth of the youth, it is in the mouth of women, it is in the mouth of men. Now you see here, you are causing trouble to us as administrators. You see, that's a very interesting feedback. They are saying that the disciples obeyed and went and carried out the 
divine command which says, I am not going in their form. Hear me, Yako. God was the command, preach the word. And the feedback is they preached, and where is the evidence? They filled Jerusalem with their own work. Doctrine, doctrines are teaching. That's where. And it comes from opposers of that preaching. They took them there. They almost killed them, if it were not for Gamaliel, who tell them, uh, prevent it, give them strict uh, uh, orders. Chini, uh, Iboko, Akatandikwa, Kambiwa now, you go, we, we think they are not going to do it. But in the state, they divide and the way and think Jerusalem with that. Now, another feedback. Now comes from another testimony from a different angle altogether. Now they have gone the, the, the priests and the son had been gave up. They say that we are not going to manage these people. In Nikama, Mujo, Uriyo Fuja, King Uzara. Siapani wa Nakuru? Hapa hapa Surai. Surai hiko... Yeah, what that in future king of Zote in the end, Ikari Mashamba, Ikari Maisha, Ikari Nyumba, you know, it came there and say, Now we give up. He in the future king of Wakaata Ikaenda. Now you are Muto Kaendelea, Kufurika, Nakushika Kila Mahali, Kila Nyumba, Kila Mutu, Kila Mahali, everywhere. They feel it with the Jerusalem. Now, years later, we are getting another feedback. But from a different kind of audience, these were the opposers. They were religious leaders. They were in the council. They were in the sunny heaven. But this one now comes from um, a different angle. You go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Now they have given up. Jerusalem has been taken over, the gospel, and the entire of Jerusalem has taken over. They have gone to Judea, they have taken over. They have gone to outside Judea, to Samaria, they have taken over. They have gone, Iso, Uo, Muto, Unaendelea Kufurika, Ni, Zemu, Iso, Zote, Ikafurika Jerusalem, Ikafurika Judea, Ikafurika Samaria, Ikaenda Nishe ya Dunia. Sasa hapa, the testimony, the feedback is from Nisha ya Dunia in the Salonaika. Now they have gone there, they have taken the flag of the gospel, they are preaching the word in season and out of season. I mean, defining everything possible. Every is this is the Jota or what I know in Jiani, when I in the layer, up of the Majosi. Naenda hapo, mawe, ondoa, preach the gospel. You know, the river is just flooding everywhere. It has been now to Salonaika. That's where we get this other uh, testimony. Now, chapter 17, there's another testimony. But from very interesting quarters. These are people who never went to church. They, are, they were not related to any religion, even a bad one. They were not religious people. So here, these are people giving feedback. Now can someone read um, um, Acts 17? Let's begin from verse 1 for a background, so that you know who are these who are giving feedback. Okay, can somebody else read? Um, Let's, let's, let's get it go. Yes, there you are. Yes. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. You know, where preaching the word was preached everywhere. 
in the synagogues by the riverside, you know on the book of Acts, we have read it. Yes? Yes. Yes. He reasoned with them from the scriptures because he said, preach the word. The word from the scriptures. He reasoned with them three weeks. Uh -huh. Yes, you know, he was using all communication methods. He was using teaching, he was using argument, he was using illustration, he was using all the methods. Uh -huh. Now, yes, some of them were persuaded. The devout Greeks. Even people uh, of our status. Yes, now go on. But the Jews who are not persuaded, that's the Zeronai. Uh -huh. They become envious. Okay. You see how the, the reporters, the people who are giving a feedback. Described it. They do. What kind of evil men? men. Yes. Well, evil men. Evil men. Does somebody have a Bible which gives another one? Lewid men. What else is there? Wicked, odd characters. Bad behaved people. From where? Not from the church, these who are in the council, but this one are from where? The marketplace. Come and kiss it to the same people, people who do not take care of their lives, they are given up in life, they can do anything, they can kill, they can steal, they can uh, abuse. No, these bad characters. These are the people who are giving a testimony about preaching the word. Very interesting. Uh huh. So they gather them together, these bad character people, and of course, whatever they make, they cannot be acquired, it cannot be a team, it cannot be a mob. Set all the city in an Now they went to a Tanesha city. Huh? But uh, you know all this, you know how hopes go, how they charge themselves, how they charge themselves. You have seen even uh, doctors, how they must charge themselves, they must charge themselves. Uh, they must see themselves, they must cite themselves, they must cite themselves. And they, when they did that, they cite themselves, and when they were cite themselves uh, in the city, they were, were at the measure. You know, they are going to do something. Uh -huh. Now they went in a move, in a mob, and attacked Jason's house. You know, that is where Jason was host to the preachers. Uh -huh. They wanted to bring them out the people. Now, they had got a tip. Jason had got a tip. And they knew how to, when they were from here, we buy a new one. So, Alikuwa me wa fitia kisiri. Watapitia dirisha, kawambia nini nende. Sisi sabaki hapa, kupambani na watu wape. Waliko kuja, wapi waubi ya ba walikuwa nyumbani mwaku. Kawambia... Uh, you know what I said, the employee is a priest for a good boy as a man. But in a sermon, if you miss the ball, don't miss the ball. Hey, this is a move. They have no name to, to lose. They lost this long time ago. 
So we come to say, you say skis that we put a gas. What a gas? And I want to be a gas. Our Paul and our Nibia on the Vanya Nib. And I think he, and I want to be a Akuna Gazi Wahendi. What I said, Makama Akuna Gazi, about to put an eye up with the old job. Then they give it the old job. Yeah, I think he was an idea on a way to say to the Mandia and say, Padia, I give me not the more. Uh -huh. Now they see how on our future we land on you. Then they drag him literally. See what the see what the Eshima. See what the Mushika is. Ah, they pull him. Uh -huh. They just some to the rulers of the city. Yes. Crying out. Now, when they were bringing them, the people sending, they were crying out. And that crying is what is called a feedback to the preaching of the word. Yes? Yes, that's the feedback. Thank you very much. What's the feedback? Those who have done what? And the world upside down have come here also. A very interesting feedback about the divine command that the disciples were given. There, you are filled with all Jerusalem with your, your doctrine. And we give up. So they went feeling everywhere in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and now we are found the world upside down. Now, what is this? What is this? How did they communicate the divine command to this level? I want to give you quick ones, five ways in which they did so that we can also couch our communication of the mission that way so that in our time we can turn this Kenya upside down. It's possible, it has been done, we have the power, and we are here. Five, number one, their communication of the divine power was Bible-based. They never came to give stories. No, 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 no. There was no room for stories. It was for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That says the Lord. You know, it was in the Bible, Bible, Bible. For the Bible says, Prophet so and so said, this is what they were doing. And if you read all this here, for example, Luke chapter 4, verse 16, it says, and Jesus came to Nazareth where he was brought up and they gave him a scroll of his side. No, that's the Bible. That was the Bible then. And you read all these things. And you read uh, even Acts chapter 2. And they reasoned, you know, we have already read that. And they reasoned with them for three weeks from the scriptures, Bible based. And you go to Acts chapter 19, verse 8 to 10, the Bible. You read Acts 20, verse 23, the Bible. I never miss going from house to house, opening the scriptures to you in your hearing. So number one, it was the communication was Bible-based communication. It is not stories. It's not myths that turn the world upside down. It is not the myths that they went there. No, it says they were based on the Bible. And so, if we are going to help our people to communicate the mission, this command, we must make sure that everything, all our communication is going to be Bible-based. And I want to give you a prophetic 
formula. When you read, um, you read uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and all, it says this is a prophetic formula which tells us how we are going to carry out the divine command which says preach the word, the word. Circumstances will be difficult, but preach it, it says this way. Son of man, I have chosen you a watchman over my people. Now, listen for a word from me and then take that word and tell the people. That's a prophetic formula for preaching the word. When we stand before people, tell our preachers, whenever you have a seminar through communication, tell them that when it comes to spiritual matters, it must be Bible-based. Number two, number two, it was Christ-centered. From the Bible, they took Christ, who is the center of Scripture. You look here, even when the, these uh, disappointed disciples, Cleopas and uh, the one who are among them house. Huh? Not man. Yes. They were going there. You know they were they were they relied on the stories, 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 uh, news, news. They were there. And then they were there, they were joined by Jesus Christ. Just stories, stories, stories. And they said, What is it that you are saying? Are you a visitor in Israel? You don't know the latest news that there was a good man here who did several good things. And uh, out of uh, um, uh, energy, the Jews killed him. It is now the third day. And then breaking news we are getting, then somebody went and stole the body. You know, they depended on breaking news. That's what they were saying here. Many news here. And Jesus knew, no, you must know that spirituality and preaching the word is not about breaking news. It's about focusing it somewhere. And by the time we reach verse 24, he said, verse 25, 27, he said, and Opening the scriptures from the law and the prophets is for things concerning himself. Christ center. Christ center. Can somebody read that? Quickly, which one is written there? Am I a director? Hey, what are you? This so this it starts chapter uh, no no Luke chapter twenty one verse twenty five. Now we can assess it. Yeah, these are the one. Yeah, number two, that message that turned the world upside down and was testified both by opposers and people who never went to the to, to church. It must have been Bible based and Christ one center. Uh huh. That one was the five and seven. Pretty quickly. Yes. The moon. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Was the seven? Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Fifteen. I will just change. Uh, that one. Verse 24, verse 25 to 27. Then he said to them, Then he said to them, You foolish ones. You foolish ones. And now, you, foolish. why does he call them foolish? They are foolish because they are approaching the preaching of the world through great news. Yes, foolish ones. 
Now she no hard to believe. Because of all the prophets have spoken. God is now moving with them from current affairs, from TikTok, from breaking news to what the prophets are saying. Bible based. So help you know, if you stand here and all you are doing is to tell people stories, what are you called by God? Foolish. Foolish preacher. You waste people's time with all these current affairs and all these things. And see, you, are, you open the Bible, read one verse, and you go to stories. Foolish. You must go back to the Bible. So he now told them, go to the Bible. Don't you know what the prophet said? Prophet Jeremiah, Prophet Isaiah, Prophet Haggai. Why do you leave them and bring stories here which cannot help much in the preaching of the word? Uh huh. Or the Lord have these things and enter into his glory. That is what they were told. That is what the, the prophets believe to do, and it is recorded. Uh huh. And beginning at Moses. And the beginning now, he went, he said, You foolish people, let me educate you. You begin with. So Moses means what? Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. He says, these ones, uh -huh, and all the what? The prophet, in other words, he took them to the Bible, which was the Old Testament then. Verse 44. Then he said to them, Yes. That all things must be fulfilled, uh -huh. which were written in the law of Moses, uh -huh. the prophets, uh -huh. and, the, and the sons concerning me. So, that which turn the world upside down must be number one by the world. Number two, Christ center. And you read all these verses, like First Corinthians 2, 1 and 2, Paul says, and when he's writing to the the Corinthians, he said, when I came to you, I did not come with the flower language so that I can overshadow Christ. But when I came to you, Vasu, I desire not to know nothing among you other than Christ and him crucified. Christ center. Number three, it was life changing. It led to decisions. Even the one that we have just read, if they see, oh, their hearts were pricked and said, yeah, uh, if I translate my mother tongue, my, our stomachs refused us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he was talking, there was something that uh, we said, this person is not an ordinary person. No. Yeah, we were struggling. This is not the right person, I mean the, an ordinary person by caste. Who made was the Christ? It led, it was life changing. It changed their perspectives, it changed their thinking and their stories. So it led to life, they were life changing decision. And let me tell you, even the someone. Before they, they never even made the conclusions. Let me give you an example, then we move on to the other because the clear stuff, the better stuff. Here is chapter two. Peter received the Holy Spirit and he stood up before the people and began to preach and they preached and they preached. And you know, the preaching was on the scriptures. He went to the history, he went to Abraham, he came all the way. And the Bible tells us because it was Bible based and it was based on Christ, they say, You are preaching too long a sermon. Tell us what to do. And before he concluded, they say, Don't even bother with the conclusion because it's Bible based and Christ centered, it led to a decision. 
and they shouted, what must we do? And I don't know whether you read the Bible well. That someone was in Kopti. They interrupted there. I said, it is clear. Don't even add more verses. Tell us what to do. And they say, repent and be baptized and you shall receive the refreshing of the Spirit. That was all. Even did not say, those who want to be baptized put up there. They already stood up and began to line up. And they baptized and baptized. How many were baptized that day? No, no, you don't know. How many were baptized? You don't know. How many were baptized? Not 3,000. Because 3,000 was about men, one, two, three. They are not talking about women. And normally, if Israel was in Africa, there must have been more women who were baptized than men. Life changing. And what happened is what is going to happen. If we are going to turn the world upside down, our communication of the mission must be the Bible based, must be fresh and must be life changing. It must make decisions. You read in chapter 19 here, uh, this Acts 19, they preach many uh, when people misbehave. The seven sons of Zechepa, you know, they were mishandled by the demons because they had separated themselves from Christ and they, had, they were not shielded. But when, he, when they were mishandled, their clothes were torn, they were dripping with blood. The Bible says it led to decisions that even magicians and wizards went and brought all the books. There was no call. No, there was no call. Just that like they brought the books of their magic. That's what the Bible says. That's what we read in Acts 19. They brought the books of magic where they had written people who you uh, Tarawa, Tarehi, who you are Makufa, to make all these things and what they are to do and then uh, uh, lead to the death. They brought all the books and the Bible said and they banned. If you have a question, you have to go to Napanya, you have to go to Matisha, you have to go to Vyomo Vyote Mia Uchawa. Arabi, you have to go to Mchungaji Omba, Joma. No, no, that's not how it works. Bring the books and ban them yourself. <laughs> you pastors, don't go and do things which are not biblical. <laughs> yeah, they went there because the Bible says what the disciples did, they were there, and the people had gathered, they wrote the books, they banned themselves, and it was even costed. And then the Bible says that one, many, many believe the truth. Amen. It must be life changing. Number four, it was day. It had become a lifestyle. It was not sprouting. Natua a Christo Squeezy, Ada Wimuliza, Uriomba, Maria Wisho, Lini. Sio <laughs> But not these people. It was day. You read verse Acts 2, 46 and 47. That's what we need to read. It was day. Day. Presenting the word. Day. Visitation. Day. Preaching the word from house to house. Breaking bread, listening to the word, it was daily. Uh huh, that's what they read. Acts 2 46 and 47. Yes, mama. Yeah. So, for 
the salmon. This is what they, 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 they want. And if you read that, uh, because we read uh, Acts 5 28, wherever they walked, they were walking samples. Uh huh. You read the Acts 84, then we can uh, summarize and finish. Yes, 84, Acts 84. The Bible says, Yes, therefore, therefore those who are scattered, those who are scattered went everywhere preaching. Went where? Which is the main word there? Everywhere. everywhere. Doing what? Preaching in the world. Okay, then you can mark. You see here, this is what is called the fundamentals, the characteristics of the first century preaching of the world, and the effect of which is they turn the world upside down. And for us who are living in the close of time, we must once more turn the world upside down, and then like from yesterday, then the end shall come. So for the end to come, we must communicate for mission. And communication for mission must be one, two, three, four, five, don't begin from there, communicate for mission. Amen. Uh, we can stand up. Uh, I will ask Samantha uh, to close this session with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, our God, we have the time for the presence this afternoon. We thank you for the message that we have heard from the server. From now, Father, we need to be equipped so that Father will be passed your message and nation which you have given us, so that Father we equip your people to get the message and be prepared for your second part. Father, we pray that may you use us in a mighty way, even after this meeting, Father, so that we may go on proclaiming your message and your gospel everywhere in this world. Father, uh, you know each one of us as we are here. We pray that may your Holy Spirit, Father, continue to work through our hearts. And Father, you even forgive us our sins and remember each one of us in your, in your kingdom when you come. Father, we pray this shortly, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have then that you post your neighbor. Yeah. 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 Mr. You are your post, Mr. And I draw Mr. Matthew in the chair. You want me to help? That's a good one. We are going to be in the chair. 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 Ni wangapi ambao wanajua kiongozi huyu? Ya. Ah kama ni kula mtaa mkishika. Ah lakini we know the reason. Ah uh, huyu ni kiongozi wa union. Mimi niliwaambia ni sauti na rudi kajato. Jejera. Now the treasurer of East Kenya Union Conference is this one. His name is Mr. Maya Mayer, the treasurer of the East Kenya Union Conference. I am the treasurer of the East Kenya Union Good afternoon. Is it because the way I dressed up? I should have put on a suit. <laughs> but uh, from the way you are sitting and the way you are looking, this meeting must be the best. Yes. And if you can hear even the message from my president, it's a message that should help us as we go and minister 
to the people we need in the uh, Maybe just to remind you that in the last few days, there will be maybe two things which will remain. One will be communication. Because there will be no pastor to preach. Communication will be the only avenue for preaching the gospel. So this, what you are doing, is something which will remain when everything else has been closed. The second one is the one Nasimamia. There must be resources to preach the gospel. So those two things, Pastor Kwanyumbani and Asikiza, your communication, but he can preach from his house. But he cannot preach in the public. But the only communication is through uh, internet and through the social media and through many other avenues. So let's make sure we encourage this ministry because it can go into any bedroom. Wangatu wa mefaudu kuenda even Somalia kugiri. Nata kwanza ukitaka kuenda na autiste na Kenya, kwanza unashibu. But through this network, through Catherine's department, it will reach everywhere. So may God bless you so much.